Hi, this is Mimi from Pastiche Knitwear, and today I want to show you how to do the German short row. I absolutely love this technique. It's my new favorite technique, and I can't wait to show it to you. Um, I've done a little sample piece just to show you the difference between a standard wrap and turn, which I've done on the left-hand side, and the German short row, which I've done on the right-hand side. I think you can see, I'll bring it up a little bit closer for you. Sometimes you'll get these little arrowheads on standard wrap and turn. You look over here on the right-hand side. It's just much, much cleaner. And if we turn it over, a lot of times, I don't know about you, but I get these big loops when I pick up my wraps. You can see over here on the other side, you have these little blips. They're much less noticeable on the German short ring. So I just wanted to show you the difference before we got started. And now let's go ahead and do the demonstration. So let's say our pattern tells us to work to two stitches before the end. And then we're going to do a wrap and turn. Now, um, usually the abbreviation for a wrap and turn that you'll see in your pattern will be a W and T. When I'm using German short row, I like to think T and W for turn and work. And so what's that, what that means is turn and work the double stitch, which I will show you in just a sec. So every time you see W and T, I want you to think T and W. So we are, we've worked to our spot and we're going to T and W, turn and work. Now whenever we work the double stitch, the yarn must be forward. Because the purl side is now facing us, the yarn is already forward, so we don't have to change anything about we don't have to move the yarn. You're going to slip one stitch purlwise, and then grab your live yarn, and you're just going to pull straight up and over the back of the needle. When you work the rest of the stitch, the yarn's going to come over the back of the needle. Now, we typically don't want to do that in knitting because that would create a yarn over, uh, but this is exactly what we want to have happen here. Now, I'm working stock in that stitch. I need to purl now, so I'm just going to keep the tension on this, bring the yarn forward, and then I'm going to purl until I've got two stitches before the end of the row. And I, then I'm going to show you how to work this on the knit side of the fabric. Okay, we've got two stitches left, and we're going to turn and work, T and W. Now, before you work the double stitch, the yarn should always be forward. So I'm going to bring the yarn forward between the two tips of the needle, slip one stitch purlwise, and pull straight up on the live end. Now on this one, you're going to see that that stitch looks really wonky and asymmetrical and weird. But that's exactly what it's supposed to look like. Don't worry about it. The purlwise double stitch looks so neat and symmetrical, but and this one looks bizarre. But um, just, you know, trust in the Lord and keep knitting. Don't worry about it. So you're going to go back into the next stitch. I'm going to knit back. And now I'm going to knit until I have two stitches in front of the double stitch. And we're going to take uh, a moment at this point and look at the double stitch just to see what it looks like. Okay, so here we are. The double stitch is just that. You've got this little interlocking bit here on the top of your needle and you have two legs on this side and two legs on that side. From now on, from the time that you make the stitch, you treat that as one stitch, not as two. So it's very visible. You know, sometimes when you're doing wrap and turns and your wrap will kind of tighten up down at the base and you're going, did I wrap that or is that? You know, it's hard to see. This is very obvious, very easy to see. So we've knitted up to two stitches in front of that double stitch. Now we're gonna turn and work. So we turn. The yarn is already forward, as it should be. I'm going to slip one stitch purlwise, pull straight up. Now, you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to pull super, super hard. Just nice and relaxed. Keep a little tension on it. Bring the yarn forward because we're going to purl back. And I'm going to purl until I have two stitches in front of the double stitch on the other side. And I think we're there. Okay, here's my double stitch here. And I've got my two stitches. I'm going to turn and work. Yarn comes forward between the two tips of the needle. Get that out of the way. Slip one stitch purlwise. Pull straight up. A little wonky looking stitch. Keep the tension on it. Just put that needle into the fabric. And we're going to knit our way back. Now this time when we knit our way back, we're going to pick up the double stitches. We're going to work all the way to the end and incorporate all these stitches back in. So the, the, all you have to do 
to so-called pick up the wraps is to just put your needle under both legs of that stitch and knit them together or work them together if you're doing it on the purl side. Got two more and then one more double stitch. One, two. It's so straightforward. There's, there are no wraps that you have to pull up and over and all of that convoluted stuff. Okay, so I've knit to the end here. Now I'm going to pick up the double stitches on the other side of the work. I'm just going to purl back across. And really, this is such a beautiful, easy way to do short rows. I'm totally hooked. The first time that I saw this was when I was um, chasing down instructions for the um, Wingspan cardigan and then the subsequent Dream Bird. I don't know that you've seen them, but they're both done by German designers and they're gorgeous shawls. And they use German short row, which of course they're used to. Okay, I'm coming pearl-wise, just coming under both legs. And so I scoured around on the internet and found some other great people who were giving information on this. And so I have been taught by others. Here I am under both legs of that stitch, just working to the end. Always grateful for the collective wisdom of knitters. So now let me just pull this out so we can see. And we've created this beautiful little short red piece. I really hope that you will give this a try. And I'm going to do another video in which I talk about uh, the differences. There are some small differences and changes that you need to make when you substitute German short row for a standard wrap and turn. And that will be coming soon. Thanks so much.